the sixth episode of Bleach's Thousand Year Blood War arc titled The Fire is by far the best episode that we have received thus far. I didn't think that they could top episode 5, but boy was I wrong. This episode faithfully adapts 5 chapters spanning from chapters 506 to 510 from the manga. All the while, it cuts out very little while managing to include several, yes several anime exclusive scenes that pad out the story and provide some great context to the final arc. So as with all of my manga vs anime comparison videos, I'm going to refrain from talking about scenes that are just straight up one to one adaptations from the manga, and I'm only going to be diving into what is cut, changed or added in the anime. So let's begin by talking about what happens before the opening song. The episode begins with an anime only scene that builds upon the Uryu scenes from previous episodes. We see him reading Soken Ishida's book on the history of the Quincy, and while turning the pages he reads about a war between the Quincy and the Shinigami that had taken place over 1000 years ago, but he had thought this entire time that the Quincy and Shinigami had feuded 200 years ago, but apparently there was a prior encounter. He then recognises a drawing of a younger Yamamoto as we then cut to the battlefield and are then shown the opening song. The episode begins with another anime only scene where Yamamoto is seen to walk towards Yuhobak who is holding the lifeless body of Kimpachi. He picks up Kimpachi's body and lays it down on the ground, stating that it has been a thousand years and he has now come to take Yuhobak's life. We then cut to the start of chapter 506 where we see Shunsui battling the Sternritter Robert and he talks about how their morale is also boosted when they know that their boss is fighting. When the Sternritters Nanana, Asnot and Basbi attempt to ambush Yamamoto, in the manga each of them say a brief line, with Nanana questioning if the leader of the Shinigami is sure of what he is doing by fighting Yuhobak on his own. Asnot states that it's the end for him while Basbi shouts out goodbye old man. Now these three personalised lines are cut down to only include Bas B's line in the anime. Now this is a pretty harmless alteration that just cuts the needless padding here. After Shinsui speaks to Robert, we get some amazing anime only scenes. They showcase the explosion that erupts after Yamamoto protects himself from the Sternritter's ambush, as we see visuals of Hitsugaya, Soifon and Komomura, with this amazing eruption from behind them that lights up the entire scene. After Yamamoto cuts Yuhobak, we are shown the first of several brief flashbacks into the past, where we are shown the original battle between a younger Yuhobak and Yamamoto. This is of course expanded within the anime as opposed to the manga where we only have one panel. After Yuhobak recalls how seeing Yamamoto's anger reminds him of his younger self. We then get our first anime only fight sequence between the two of them that expands upon some off screen clashes that are shown in the manga. We see Yamamoto charge towards Yuhobak who avoids the attack and sends Yamamoto hurtling through the air. They clash onto the rooftop and they return to where they were standing. The anime here does such a fantastic job of adapting such little material from the manga, as they give the early portion of Yamamoto and Yuhobak's battle some added context before Yuha draws his blade and blocks an attack from Yamamoto and prior to Yamamoto activating his Bankai. After Yamamoto makes all of the flames vanish into a Zanbakdo at the end of chapter 506, the anime cuts to the reactions of Ukitake, Shunsui, Unohana and Hitsugaya from chapter 507, as it alters the pacing to show us Yamamoto saying Zankan no Tachi to coincide with Shunsui and Ukitake realising Yamamoto has activated his Bankai. The manga on the other hand, he says Bankai before their reaction. Now this was switched around for the differences in pacing between the two mediums, since chapter 506 had ended on a cliffhanger which wasn't needed for the anime, as the anime had instead showed us the reactions of the captains first and then cut to Yamamoto saying Bankai and continuing his battle, showing us the scenes from the beginning of chapter 507, where Yuhobak informs Hashward about the last time that he had seen Yamamoto's Bankai. When Yuhobak describes Zanka no Tachi as a sword of hellfire, the anime and manga show different depictions of Yamamoto from the past, with the manga showing him from behind striking with his blade, while the anime shows him raising his Zanbakdo in the air with his flames encircling him. After Yuhobak realises that Yamamoto's flames are now concentrated at the tip of his Zanbakdo, we get an anime only fight sequence here, where he fires some boulders towards Yamamoto, who effortlessly destroys them with the tip of his blade. Now this is just before he reveals the name of the first phase of his Bankai, which blows away everything that it touches. After Yamamoto explains Zanka no Tachi East and strikes towards Yuhobak, a scene is cut from the anime, where Yamamoto exclaims that not even Blute Bean, the source of a Quincy's defences, can stop his Bankai. After Yuhobak's blade is broken, we cut to another brief anime-only flashback from 1000 years ago, as the head captain recalls when Yuhobak and his subordinates 
subordinates were defeated. We are shown a bloodied younger Yuhabak who was laying on the corpses of his fallen soldiers, with Yamamoto standing over him. This then cuts to present day Yamamoto who says that he will force him to remember that Yuhabak and his army are nothing but a horde of corpses waiting to be burned. Now this exclusive material occurs just before Yamamoto activates Zanka no Tachi West. After activating Zanka no Tachi West, we get yet another anime only flashback of Yuhobak recalling Yamamoto using a similar ability 1000 years ago, while he describes that his heat now reaches temperatures exceeding 15 million degrees. Following Hashwald's reaction to Zanka no Tachi West from the start of chapter 508, we then cut to an anime exclusive scene catching up with Uryu as he continues to read about the history of the Quincy. He finds out that the Quincy Empire were referred to as the Empire of Light. Their goal was to destroy Hollows, but they were opposed by the Soul Society who they had ended up invading. But during this battle 1000 years ago, the Quincy were wiped out by the original Gotei 13. Then 200 years ago, the Shinigami had decided to eliminate any surviving Quincy in the fear that if they were allowed to survive, they would disrupt the balance of souls between the human world and the Soul Society. After reading this, Uryu states that no matter how much they try, the Shinigami and Quincy will never get along. As we are shown some flashbacks of Soka and Ishida, and then Uryu teaming up with Ichigo during the Hueko Mundo arc, which is contrasted against Uryu refusing to help Ichigo in Hueko Mundo this time round because the Quincy exists to eradicate Hollows and Arankars, not to protect them from this supposed threat that Nell had warned Ichigo about. After Yamamoto notes that now that Yuhobak's sword is broken, he only has his arrows left to use, we are shown yet another anime exclusive flashback with Yuhobak being cornered. Strangely, we see a mysterious unidentified Shinigami standing behind Yuhobak on top of a pile of corpses, while Yuhobak faces a young Yamamoto covered in flames as he charges up an arrow to fire at him. Now the anime speeds up Yuhobak's activation of Church Song Sanctuary Prayers, as some dialogue before he activates it is cut from the anime. In chapter 508, Yamamoto reacts to Yuhobak raising his hand before even activating the ability. He states that there is nothing that he can do against him, but Yuhobak tells him not to just assume that the Quincy can only use Quincy crosses and Quincy arrows. This inconsequential line is cut as we streamline their battle into the church song and then immediately into Yamamoto activating Zanka no Tachi Sal. To emphasize the horrific nature of Zanka no Tachi South, the anime has some exclusive sequences to visually enhance and convey to us the activation of the third stage of Yamamoto's Bankai. There are some amazing scenes of skeletons rising from the ground, accompanied by some unsettling sound design, as we hear bones cracking, with the scene panning across the landscape, revealing a horde of undead corpses awakening at Yamamoto's side. They march towards Yuhobak, their enemy, while his Church Song Sanctuary praise collapses. This is an amazing use of CGI and 2D animation which comes together to breathe life into the pages of the manga, which already do such a fantastic job of depicting the skeletal corpses marching towards their target. While the scene where Yuhobak recognizes the faces of his fallen comrades from a thousand years ago is one to one adapted from the manga, I have to comment on how well the scene was handled within the anime, with how the skeletal figures all transform into how they had looked when they were alive. This just adds to the unsettling feeling that this ability gives you, and it even makes you empathize with Yuhobak, who is seeing some of his comrades for the first time in a millennia. Then some scenes are rearranged as in the anime it cuts to Yamamoto giving a monologue about why his bankai can't be stolen, but in the manga before he talks about this, he walks away from Yuhobak as he explains that he is putting some distance between them, and if Yuhobak wants to come after him then he needs to cut down his former comrades. The anime has Yamamoto step back from Yuhobak and taunt him after he explains why he his Bankai can't be stolen. This is switched up in the anime because it expands upon Yuhobak's frustration here, as he is made to think about having to crush the corpses of his subordinates that are restraining him in order to go after Yamamoto. We get another anime only scene where Yuhobak remembers his fallen comrades once again as he yells out. This is followed by a scene that cuts back and forth from the past to the present, with Yuhobak walking past the corpses of his men in the past which is mixed with Yuhobak in the present crushing the skeletal remains of his men as he breaks free to follow Yamamoto. This added scene just adds so much more emotion and emphasis on the original battle between the two of them as they even show us a full shot of all of Yuhobak's men who were killed by Yamamoto a thousand years ago. And this is one of my favorite added scenes in this episode as we get to see just how many subordinates Yuhobak had lost in their first fight. And it makes you better appreciate why he has taken revenge against the Soul Society 
21,000 years later. The pain that Yuabaki is feeling after losing his comrades is contrasted against the Shinigami that Yamamoto has lost. As the anime cuts from a young and old Yamamoto, as the anime shows us a young and old Yamamoto cutting back and forth until we see a silent glimpse that reveals to us all of the Shinigami that have been slaughtered with an particular emphasis placed upon the loss of Sasakibe, which is the fuel to Yamamoto's fire during this battle. All of this happens before Yamamoto activates Zanka no Tachi North in the anime, which is expanded upon and is given some stunning visuals that convey the powerful nature of the final stage of his Bankai that ends any encounter with one final decisive strike. After it is revealed that Yamamoto was battling against an imposter, a flashback from the start of chapter 510 that explains the powers of the Sternritter doppelganger twins, Royd Lloyd, is cut from the anime. The two pages that are removed from the anime speak about how, at birth, the twins had looked so alike that they were mixed up and they didn't know who was the eldest or the youngest. Because of how identical they were, they had mimicked each other from birth. They had both realized that they were doing this at the age of five, and when they had both turned 12, they had realized that they were able to mimic other human beings too. The older of the two Lloyd was able to mimic another person's powers and skills, as well as their appearance. He had in fact been defeated by Kimpachi earlier on, and the younger brother Royd was able to copy the memories, mind and appearance of another. And this is who Yamamoto had been battling this entire time. Now this brief explanation about the twins and the nature of both of their powers is omitted in the anime, but I think that it's for a very good reason, because it allows us to spend more time with a fan favourite character before the end of the episode. Now I am of course referring to Sosuke Aizen who has 2 minutes of screen time at the end of this episode as the anime expands upon his meeting with Yuhobak from chapter 510. This chapter briefly mentions that Yuhobak had offered Aizen a position within his army but he had refused and it shows us one panel of Aizen which just depicts him tied to Chesama from a scene that recalls his sentencing at the end of the fake Karakura Town arc. The anime on the other hand blows the manga out of the water here as we cut to Muken and actually shown the entire conversation between Yuhobak and Aizen. The two address each other as Aizen reveals that he knows about him, but he had never thought that he would end up seeing him with his own eyes. Aizen doesn't ask about why Yuhobak is here, since he can tell what is happening on the ground above him by just sensing the spiritual pressure alone. Yuhobak refers to Aizen as one of the five great war powers and offers an invitation for him to join his army, as he states that they both share in the same path of wanting to destroy the Soul Society. But Aizen confidently refuses uses the offer, as he explains that he cannot stand to work under the leader of the Quincy who is only going to be following in his footsteps. After getting his answer, Yuhobak is about to leave, but Aizen asks if the real reason that Yuhobak had visited him was because he had seen Aizen's power as a threat to his own, to which Yuhobak agrees, and he elaborates that since Aizen has fused with the Hokyoku, it would take too long to kill him, and it would be too troublesome to take him with them and to restrain him again. Aizen commends Yuhobak as he agrees that it is best to shorten any time that the two of them spend on the same path together, since they would eventually target each other on the path that they share to destroy the Soul Society and to overthrow the Soul King. This extended scene helps you to better understand why Aizen had refused to join Yuhobak, as well as giving us some fan service by showing us a hyped encounter between two of the biggest villains in the series. I definitely have to praise the anime for including such an amazing scene and revealing more insight into the character of Aizen, and why he would refuse to be let out of prison. Now this episode concludes with Yamamoto having his Bankai stolen, and Yuhobak drawing his oversized Reishi blade in order to cut down and defeat the head captain. And this brings us to the end of episode 6, which wraps up by adapting all the way up to the end of chapter 510, leaving us on this cliffhanger of Yamamoto being supposedly killed by the real Yuhobak with so many additional scenes providing more of an insight into the original battle between Yamamoto vs Yuhobak, as well as learning more about the Quincy history via Uryu, it is safe to say that the anime once again adapts and improves upon the material from the manga when it comes to the 6th episode of Bleach's Thousand Year Blood War arc anime. I absolutely love how one episode after the other, we are seeing the utter demise of the Shinigami, and now that their leader has been defeated, there is little hope that remains for the future of the Soul Society. The highlight for this episode was definitely seeing Zanka no Tachi South being depicted in anime form and the incredible reveal of the entire conversation between Aizen and Yuhobak when they had briefly spoken to each other in the central underground prison Muken. This episode slows down the pacing and gives the manga 
material more room to breathe as it adapts five chapters into the 20 minute span of this episode. I feel like we got enough time to spend with the external cast reacting to Yamamoto on the battlefield as well as having two additional fight sequences between Yamamoto and Yuhobak that were not in the manga. Episode 6 is by far my favourite episode thus far and I feel like with each passing episode the most recent installment becomes my favourite. However, I struggle to believe if they can top this episode during the remainder of this first core of the anime. I loved seeing Yuhobak's former men getting a spotlight as well as seeing each form of Zanka no Tachi being explained and properly showcased. This was a treat to watch and it was so worth the wait. Now next week the episode is titled Born in the Dark as we continue with the devastating invasion of the Quincy and we're going to learn about the fate of Yamamoto. But until then continue the discussion of episode 6 in the comments and let me know your thoughts about the latest installment of the Thousand Year Blood War arc anime. Lastly thank you for making it to the end of this video and I can't wait to see you in my next Bleach video. If you enjoy my content, then you can support my channel through Patreon for as little as a dollar a month or even through YouTube by becoming a channel member. You will gain access to exclusive channel perks and a Discord server which I frequently use. So become a member of my Zero Division and be the first to know about my upcoming videos. And once again, thank you for sticking around till the end of the video and whatever you contribute will mean a lot to me.